The after repair value or ARV of a home is one of the most important pieces of data that you need as a real estate investor. But as a rookie, maybe you haven't figured out exactly how to determine a property's ARV. But that's okay because this video was made just for you. We're going to break down how you can quickly and easily estimate a property's ARV with just three, three simple steps. Hey there, guys. My name's Tony J. Robinson, and I'm the co host of the Bigger Pockets Real Estate Rookie Podcast. You can follow me on Instagram at Tony J. Robinson. Now, today, we're going to talk all about the all important after repair value. This is truly one of the most important skills that an investor needs to develop. Whether you're flipping, wholesaling, or holding property as a long term or short term rental, you need to have a good grasp on what that property will be worth once you finish your rehab. Now for this video, we're only going to focus on single family homes. Estimating the ARV for large multifamily and commercial properties is a totally different beast. So we'll leave that for a different video. Now, first up, let's just define exactly what ARV is. Your after repair value or ARV for short is the estimated value of a house after you've completed your planned repairs. Now, let's give an example. If you bought a house for $75,000 and spent another $25,000 in repairs, your total investment is $100,000. But the actual value of that house is likely going to be some other number and hopefully a higher number. It could be worth $100,000 after the repairs, which means you're spot on with your cost and your, your value. Or it could be worth $90,000 after the repairs, which means you might've gotten a bad deal. Or on the other hand, it could be worth $200,000, which means you got an amazing deal. Now, hopefully that quick example shows how getting your ARV wrong is one of the fastest ways to make a deal go badly. Now you might be thinking, Tony, if the ARV is so important, why don't I just hire a professional like an agent or an appraiser to do it for me? Now, the short answer is that would be super both inefficient and impractical. And let me break down why. As a real estate investor, you're going to be analyzing a lot of deals and there's no way on earth that an agent or an appraiser would be able to provide you with an ARV in a timely manner. You would be waiting forever if you're relying on those two people and you would miss out on so many deals because you're waiting on these professionals to do the work for you. Now, a second reason is the better you get at estimating ARVs on your own, the more confident you'll become. And honestly, as a rookie investor, building your confidence is crucial to your success. Lastly, you become intimately more familiar with your market by investing time into estimating your own ARV. You start to know what houses might be worth after just a quick glance at the listing. And at that point, you graduate from being a real estate rookie to a, you know, you know I actually don't know what comes after a rookie. So let me figure that out. Okay, so I just Googled it. And apparently after a rookie, there's intermediate, uh, there's skilled, and there's proficient. So there you have it. I guess we're gonna have to launch another YouTube channel called The Real Estate Intermediate. Okay, so we've defined ARV, and I shared why I feel it's so important for you to develop this skill. So now let's get into the three steps you need to take to quickly estimate a property's ARV. Okay, so step one is to gather information on the subject property. And when I say subject property, I just mean the property that you want to estimate the ARV for, which in most cases is the property that you're thinking about. About buying. And here's the information that you want to gather on that subject property. First is location. You want to know not just the city, but the neighborhoods within the city. You know, what school districts is the house associated with? Is the subject property near any cool or desirable amenities like a lake or a shopping mall or freeways or public transit or pretty much anything that most people would view as positive? You then want to identify any negative aspects of the location. Are there loud or awful smells coming from the nearby factory? Is the house next door a complete eyesore? Or again, anything else that would be a major concern to most people. After you research the location, you want to look up information on the actual lot, the land that the property sits on. What's the size of the lot? Is the yard fenced or unfenced? Is the property on a cul-de-sac or in the middle of a busy street? Uh, look at any other unique features or factors uh, of the land that the property sits on. And last, you want to look at the actual property characteristics. What's the property square footage? How many bedrooms and bathrooms does it have? Is there a garage or a carport? Is it a single family detached home or a condo? You know, what year was the property built in? 
After those more black and white details are established, you want to focus on the style and the finish that the subject property will have after your rehab is complete, right? Will you be making this a high-end renovation with, you know, granite marbled everything, you know, or are you going kind of more middle of the road? Um, it's up to you, but you want to make sure that you have an image of what the house will look like when it's done for the next step of the ARV process. Now, let me also explain exactly where you can get all of this information. Now, the MLS is obviously the first choice and has all of the information that you need for a property, uh, but you can also use free resources like Zillow or Redfin or even paid resources like PropStream. Okay, so that was step one, gathering information on the subject property. Step two is gathering information on comparable or similar properties. Comparable properties or comps for short are properties that have similar characteristics to the subject property. So how do you find these comps? The same way you found the data for your subject property using sites like Zillow and Redfin are totally fine. Or of course you can ask your agent to pull a list of recently sold properties. And then last, there's always paid options like PropStream. So now you know where you can pull the data, but let me clarify exactly what you should be looking for. First, you want to look at recent sales, ideally properties that have sold within the last maybe three to six months. Second, you want comparable locations. If your subject property is in the C-class part of the neighborhood, then your subject property should also be in a C-class part of the neighborhood. The closer your comps are in proximity to your subject property, the better. Now, I usually start my search about a quarter mile out from the subject property and only increase the radius if I'm having trouble finding enough good comps. Now, as a side note, if you invest in a more densely populated area, then maybe a half mile or so should get you the right number of comps. Now, if you invest in more rural areas, right, where each property maybe sits on like an acre or two, then you might need to increase your search radius from, you know, a quarter mile to a few miles. After location, you want to check for similar size. Ideally, your comp should be within 15%, give or take, um, to the size of your subject property. Next, you want your comps to have the same bedroom and bathroom count as your subject property. In most neighborhoods, a three bedroom is going to sell for more than a two bedroom, and a two bedroom will sell for more than a one bedroom. So if your subject property is a two bedroom, but your comp is a four, then your ARV is going to be off and you might walk into a very bad deal. Now, the one place that you do have a little wiggle room is with the bathrooms. Bathrooms generally don't impact ARV as heavily as bedrooms. So if you're off by half a bathroom or so, you shouldn't worry too much about it. The goal of this step isn't to find an identical comp because that's nearly impossible. Instead, you want to find a group of comps that share the most common broad criteria that I just went through. The next part of this process is to create a spreadsheet where you store all of the comps that you find. And in this spreadsheet, you'll want to notate the property's address, sales price, the date that it was sold, number of bedrooms and bathrooms, and square footage. But before we move on, if you're enjoying this video, please do us a huge favor and subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications. We're working super hard to create valuable content for all of our real estate rookies and your support really does mean the world to us. Okay, so now it's time for step three where you'll use the data from your comps to estimate the value of your subject property. The goal with this step is to create an estimated ARV. Remember, not a bulletproof number. There are so many different ways to complete this last step. Some people take averages of sale prices for their comps. Uh, other people create a range where your cheapest comp is the bottom um, and then your most expensive comp is the top of that range. I personally like to take a slightly different approach where I use the price per square foot. And let me break that down. I want you to look at the sales price for each of your comps and then divide that sale price by the square footage of that property. This gives you your price per square foot. Again, you're going to take your sales price divided by the square footage and that will give you your price per square foot. Once you've got a price per square foot for each comp, I want you to then calculate an average price per square foot for all of your comps. So basically just take all of your price per square foot and find the average. Once you have your average price per square foot, multiply that number to your subject property square footage. And voila, you've got your estimated ARV. Before we end, I want to explain something very important. 
Real estate valuation, right? Finding your ARV is always just an educated guess. Even the best appraiser, broker, or investor can't predict the future. Instead, we're using hard data from the past to make educated guesses about the future. But markets can change quickly, and there is some risk in trying to predict the future. So just know going into it that your ARVs won't be perfect. But the good news is you don't need it to be perfect. You just need to be pretty darn close. And if you follow the steps in this video, I promise you'll get there. So I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Again, please support the channel by subscribing and turning on notifications. You guys can connect with me on Instagram at Tony J. Robinson, and we can keep the conversation going there. Thanks again for hanging out with me today, and I will see you all in the next video. See you later.